Every picture tells a story. Welcome to the Voodoo Podcast with Richard and Heidi John. If we talk about the time when, uh, in the, let's say the uh, late 70s, let's go back to that period of time. I mean, it was sort of, punk was finishing up, new wave was coming in. Uh, the West, in, in the Western music scene in the 80s, what drew you towards the electronic music and what did you see in the music, uh, musical beginnings of the electronic dance music? Um, beginnings, for me, the beginnings were because I, I was into scratch, hip-hop, and so I'd go to small places like the WAG or very tiny places. But then what was happening was um, it was rumbling, and, and by that I mean there were little parties shooting up here and there that were influenced by maybe the sound of Chicago, which we get your acid house, your acid jazz, and still small, still no, real. it was really a real underground. Yeah, it was really underground. When, not that many, and it was a, a mob called the Mutoid Waste, used to do um, all sorts of music, really way out stuff, you know, the decor, everything, oh. old cars, they'd be walking around with chain mail, hubcaps, Oh, up really? Caps. Yeah, all like, like, right. as male, hanging around them in chains. They were brilliant. <laughs> and they were fantastic, and, and they were really good. They'd be in the city. And where were they from? Chicago? No, no they no, were no. they were English, England based. I think, so, yeah. Well, well, whatever. Go on, go, go. <laughs> So we, we, we'd go, we, we'd go to, we'd heard about these, and oh, and they were great. It, it, it was good. It was, and, and but they were really sort of um, rough places, uh, almost derelict places, um, warehouses. London was good at the time. Anyway, um, yeah, it was. Um, so we, we were going. There was the odd party here and there going out. Nightclubs used to finish at three o'clock. Um, yeah, and. Okay, um, nightclubs really, they're, they're not very nice. Um, and so it, it progressed from there because, because we, we, was, um, we were publicans at the time and um, a lot of people in and out, you knew what was going on. Where was your pub? In uh, Bethnal Green, Hackney, uh, E2 in London. Was that, the, was that sort of, the, was that where the Cray Brothers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, was the, it was yeah, one of yeah. their... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, they, it was one of their pubs, was it? Well, at one stage, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Before us. Okay. But still, we, we still have the uh, remnants of um, the East End of how it was. We'd be told where yeah. we were. Yeah, right. <laughs> what even at, when you were in the as publicans, people would come in and uh, with black jackets and sort of give rough you up a bit and talk. No, no us never up. ever roughed no. us up. They liked us for no, some no. reason. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why, but they did. They liked us. Yeah, the great Them young couple. We were, we were the youngest publicans in, I in can London imagine, yeah. um, at that time. And what year was that? Um, when did we go in? We went in 78. Yeah, it was 77. Well, so that was at the height of the punk era. I mean, you know, yeah. reggae was yeah, happening. But, reggae yeah. was no, no, great. But, but we, was, we had a, a, a right East End family pub where Nana came. Okay. Was also, he's up Mother Brown. It was, a, it was the end of an era. Um, the last 10 years that we were there. And... Um, uh, it was changing. What would Gordon Ramsay say about that pub if he walked in in 1978 and saw the way it was run? He'd love to. He would love it. He yeah. would <laughs> love it. He <laughs> would have loved it. It was sharp. What drew you towards the electronic music and what oh, there was... there you go. So, what, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, we were in the pub. People yeah. kept, Customers anyway, changed. Anyway, a customer came in and said... No, no. Um, yeah, a customer came in and said... Uh, have you heard of it? There's a party down the road. There's a party. Yeah, no, it's, 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 um, it's, that, it's the new music, blah, blah, blah. And, but you'd already heard um, little bits and people that was, were talking about it, was a buzz about it, you know. And, um, and he told us, yeah, it's, it's down the road, in uh, back streets of East End, I can't remember where it was now, in Bedford Green. And um, we went down there, and uh, yeah, there was a family, not, not, not that many people. But um, it was a... Uh, it was it was great. It was just um, a strobe. A little light over there somewhere with a DJ. DJ was um, very difficult to get to the place. Sound system. All those, 
couple of those are, um, you know. Simple. <laughs> One man could have set it up all by himself. It was great. <laughs> Climb up ladders and get over this and jump over there. Anyway, yeah, you jump over the rubbish. Space. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was, it was great. It was, um, uh, there was, what were they sort of playing at that time? More Balearic. They were getting us up. It was summer yeah. was coming in. There was a lot of new beat, a lot of... Um, in Chicago and, house? Yeah, there was a house. And it was more Balearic. In, the, in this particular party, yeah. Yeah, in that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. It's... There's a hundred people queuing up. Yeah, there's a 200 queue. people. <laughs> and then you couldn't get in because the venues were full. Yeah. We were not talking about nightclubs, we were talking about there warehouses. Is. You know? And then the, um, then they started going to the clubs. Didn't yeah. They? But um, it, it, was, it, 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 it was like we couldn't get in, so we thought, oh, me. And that's what made us then, well, let's do our own one. Yeah, yeah. Let's put John, our own one yeah. on. Let's, let's, let's do it and... and, and because we can't get in, we want to so party. We knew a couple of DJs, <laughs> and it didn't take long to put the fingers out. And that's how it started with, with Joe, a friend. We've got to mention Joe, the Labyrinth. And, um, and, and, who, that, and who's Joe, the Labyrinth? He, had, like, he, he was running a pub uh, down the road to us. And so I knew him as a publican. And, um, and he was a DJ as well? No, 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 he was a publican, okay. just yeah. like us. But love. Yeah. And we went, we went out to one of these parties, and wow. Joe, how are you going, mate? <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, that's great. I didn't know you came to this party. Yeah. And you'd, you'd see people and they'd go, don't tell my mum, because I was a publican, wasn't I? Everyone knew me. And it was like, oh, God, please, you didn't see me here. Don't tell my mum. Was it, was it like taboo or something going to these things? It was, well, no, well, it was because, underground. No, was it, well, no, the taboo was... The media was crucifying it. Yeah, right. They yeah. wanted to stop it. Yes, and the police as well, right? Well, no. Oh, well, no that came no, later. No, that okay. came later. <laughs> but then it's, that came plus, later. Well, yeah, because then... Well, then they set up the, the um, uh, force. They set up the rave force. Is that right? Um, oh. It got started in England um, about 90 um, when... I, I think it was 90 when our right to party was a big demonstration in London... I wasn't there for that time, I was here, obviously. But that's when it all came in and the white papers came in and it would have landed here um, a couple of years later because I actually did read the white papers when they, uh, when they were launched here and someone just happened to show me. Okay. I was in the know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's when we did our first party. Okay. With, with Joe um, up in North London and um, we got the warehouse, hired the warehouse, and um, it was it was pretty basic, and um, it was all good, and and we started to think um, it was a bit concerned. And what would you charge for something like that at the door? Oh, like, five pound. Five pound. Okay. And how many people would you? Have well, the first the... one we did, there was a couple of hundred people rocked up. Okay. And we was well well yeah. happy. Yeah. Um, it covered the costs. Yeah. It co <laughs> and, uh, but we was putting the party on for ourselves. Yeah. Because we couldn't get in. Yeah. You know? It was just make your own fun. We, yeah. We couldn't get into and it. Know, was, and just get yeah. on and do something and, else. Yeah. And the other thing was, which it was difficult sometimes for us to get in, sometimes, right? As, as, it's, as, as, it, as the media got hold of it and then all eyes were on... And then the rave suddenly appeared. It's a rave, rave scene. We booked the party for uh, the, for the weekend at the, um, uh, the warehouse. And uh, so we thought, should we put the next one on? No, no, no. Anyway, we did. And um, we thought, oh, look, no one's going to turn up. Anyway, it was doubled the amount. Doubled the amount. Yeah, there were thousands now. You know? It and, it, and it just filled up. Cause and did you have security and things like that? Oh, or? yes, yeah. Uh, only a couple of little stun guys. Stun guns at the start, under the table. But the first. The stun guns. <laughs> yeah, stun guns. No, well, well, then it no, 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 no. Because no, we had to hire. It was very different. It's very different in London. Like because I'll tell you something. Because the in nineteen, I think it was eighty nine or ninety when the uh, they had that big one out in Reading or whatever it was that they were private school boys and some guys from, and they said they didn't have any security guards and what happened was Tell them that. and 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 then some uh, uh some dudes from london came and they it was the middle of summer and they reckon they walked in with black jackets black pants and about eight of them and were stormed into the where they were counting the money and they said if you want this to go ahead any further you give us half of your takings 
or oh, yeah. we'll yeah, shut it down. The whole yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, well, we no we were on that before before that uh, we, we was here then, but um, <laughs> we, we was on that scenario well yeah. before that. Joe had yeah. that with shotguns but, facing him. Jesus right. Christ! <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, well, first it wasn't off, easy. Yeah. No. All right. I'm funny. trying to get a word in it. Well, you can't. You know I mean? <laughs> no. No, the first ones we hired mercenaries. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, used to, they were going Shit. at the time. There was advertising <laughs> for mercenaries, people to go out to Angola, and they would go. Oh, you, oh, people, oh I, yeah. I, was, I was in the London Fire Brigade at the time, okay. and the fireman that was there, he, he was in the army. Then he joined the fire brigade. They were looking for um, mercenaries to go out to Angola, and um, he left the fire brigade and went to Angola. But that's. That's heavy. Joe knew someone. Joe knew someone, <laughs> jo- jo knew someone that, that was a, a, a mercenary, and um, spent a couple of them. And um, no one's going to mess with you. St- no, because we knew. Yeah. There we are, sitting there in the middle of a, a nowhere. Yeah, you know you're a target. Uh, yeah. In, 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 in London, and um, so. Mm-hmm. No, so you had your wits about you in terms of knowing well, that, yeah. yeah. Well, I'd already yeah. been yeah. publican in these yeah. for ten years, We'd, and so I'd, I'd had my eyes open to a lot of things. We started putting, um, we had um, a medical person there because yeah. I was very concerned about um, if, if someone um, dehydrated or collapsed, had a fit or anything. Did you have anything and, like that happen? No, never. And um, then, um, oh, the police, the police came. The police came. They, well, they always they'd come in, <laughs> but they'd look, look round. Now, what was going on? Yeah. They say, what time is it finished? Yeah. You say, oh, about six, seven. Okay, I'll be back to make sure it's closed. Okay. And that's all it was. You know? And um, well, that's pretty good, isn't it? Well, it was at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, um, uh, but then <laughs> behind their backs, he goes to the owner of the warehouse and says, if you rent this warehouse out to these people ever again. You won't be able to park a truck outside your business. You won't be able to do this. That's this, unbelievable. That. You will not and he wouldn't hire us. <laughs> he wouldn't hire it again. And um, there you go. Um, we did that. We did a, a couple of others around about. Um, we'd already started their immigration to come to Australia, and um, it was almost time. But why Australia? What what was the thing about Australia that you thought, oh, we want to go to Australia? We were ready for a change. and I'd been out here since, yeah. uh, when I first came out, I was, I joined the, I was, well, when I was 15, 16, I joined the Merchant Navy. And I came out in, oh, late, well, late 60s. Okay. Um, I was in Australia. And, um, boy, that was different. But where, where did you stop in Sydney or what, in, in, what? in the on, late sixties? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, Perth, Perth, Melbourne, yeah. Sydney. So and, you, and then did cruises from Sydney and Melbourne out to um, Fiji Island. So what's a merchant sailor exactly? What what do they? It's a passenger line. Okay. Okay. Not military. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But not cargo. It was a passenger line. You know, the, the two thousand passengers and bringing immigrants out. To, yeah. Um, um, it would have been a different place back then. <laughs> Australia. Oh, yeah. uh, that, down in, in, um, not Circular Key, because Circular Key, I don't think it was there or the new one, was it? But, oh, Circular Key has always been there. Um, but around the corner, um, oh, I don't know what Darling is. Uh, Allenhurst. It's another one. Uh, just around the corner. Well, oh, that well, it was rough. It was rough, but... Um, I think it was Aspen Australia was Australia and there you go. Yes, because we've seen a lot of there you go. At the end of that, really. At the end of the fair go in Australia because it's not here now. That's for sure. Hello. You know. We well, I think the, sorry, the end of another really. Yeah. You know, Australia, uh, as as everyone knew, it, yeah. it was a big change. Sure. The same as every country, the whole world is changing. Yeah. It's it, you know. Um, changed in the 90s and it's definitely changing now. Isn't yeah, it? totally. So it, it's... Um... It was a bit of shock when we were leaving because uh, uh, everyone was like, what are you doing? We're just, we're just cracking, we're just going and, and everyone was introducing everyone to everyone. It was really networking yeah, we because just... it was coming into form now. 
and, and so there were thousands and thousands of parties in England. We, 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 the atmosphere from the start, like same here, changed with numbers. More and more people yeah. came, the more and more it, it changed. The vibe was st still electric. Don't get me wrong, uh, um, it, it was amazing and, 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 and over here. But it, it, it brought other elements in, you know, um, and... Life course, does that though, it brings in, you know, buckets of strange yeah, objects. Yeah, yeah, but it was... Um, <laughs> strange <laughs> objects. So there you go, that, that, that was the London, I mean, there's a lot more of it, it involved in the London bit, but that, that's basically it. And in a nutshell. We was off then, Joe, he, 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 uh, he started to get his first uh, labyrinth party and, and went on to um, hire um, uh, a, a place, the Four Aces in Dalston, Hackney, and, um, and did every Friday and Saturday night for, for, 10, for 10 years, I think, just under 10 years. Wow. Um, that's what he did when we came to Australia. Um, so from all that and buzzing and everything like that to, to here, um, it was, was, well, we, no, we, yeah, we, was, we, was was no, we, we was excited <laughs> to come here because we was all fired up and right. It's when we got here. We were in yeah, shock. We were happy. We were happy. We were, like, we were, everything else that we have done apart from our entertainment side of things was perfect. But when it came to the entertainment side of things, we were used to something else, and that was a real culture shock. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I was in shock. I said to Richard, I know we've emigrated, but to where? Yeah, anyway, you know? yeah. It was a question. But it, was only, it didn't take us long to sort of realise sort of what out. was going yeah, exactly. on. exactly. You know? <laughs> the rave scene evolved into popular culture and became more commercialised. How did this affect you guys? What, the commercialism? Yeah. Oh, made everything well, more expensive. Made everything really ridiculously expensive. See, when we used to do parties, we put, we put a party on. We, it was purely love. We lived it. We lived in the warehouses. We was with people, people with families, and that was our lives. Literally, that, that's what we did. And that's what the we pictures through, going on. And that's what uh, we had the, um, the, the shop, blah blah blah. And that's what we did. And and the people and everything was done um, with with. Um, um, uh, a, a group of people um, with um, amazing creativity um, for the decor and everything was, was never bought. It was all recycled stuff. Every single decoration was recycled. And we used to go to, to the recycled place and get loads and loads of stuff and then and the over to film. just create <laughs> an environment. Um, you know, old styrene, anything, they cut them out, paint them. We did, oh. Whereas... The, the, um, the commercial bit, um, uh, in, in, a, in a sense, that they, they um, uh, well, once you start going commercially, they, they start to bring out DJs um, that were playing commercially sort of music as well, you know? Um, that's what sort of, as it progressed, so you, you had the, the, the radio DJs. They, they still did some underground sounds as well, but um, I suppose to make their money... Um, they um, got, went on the commercial side of things. In, in the beginning, there was no record labels attached to this. This was purely bedroom sounds yeah. or <clears throat> small studio sounds. It wasn't anything large because none of the industry had anything to gain from it. Um, and once the industry has something, it, it's industry. That's yeah. how industry works. Not digging anyone, it's just as it is. And uh, once it was realised that it or was going to be the next big wave, of course the industry come in. And when the, once the industry come in, it, it's like taking it from being publicly owned to commercially owned. Yeah. And, and, and the same thing it happens. changes things. It, it but you changes. have more guidelines then that you have to come into. You have more, more hurdles that you've got to cross. Yeah. You've got more people that you've got to keep happy all the time, even though they're That's not. Nice. Yeah, and, and things like that. Whereas we weren't about that. There was, a, I wish I could explain how much love was in the group that created something that was so magical that it's left something in the heart of every Melbourne that was touched by it or came to it. 
clean the toilets with me. Uh, walk the streets. So where, where was these parties in Melbourne when you started doing these parties? Where oh, was the no. first one? Where, where was I from? Uh, first, the first one was um, in Fitzgrove. Did no, this one was biology at the... Well, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was yeah. the powerhouse, yeah, biology, biology one. Powerhouse? Uh, on Melbourne? Albert Park Lake. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. And, um, Is that was, a steakhouse? No, it's, no, it was, no. it's a sort of club. Um, I think it's a... Rowing a, club or maybe yeah. something okay. like that. Okay. Um, and it used to have a basket um, court on top. Right. And um, it's still there now. Yeah. But... Um, uh, we hired that and, and uh, we said, look, can we do that? And I went back years and years later and I said, just to see if it was still for hire. This is like years and years and years later, like, you know, 15 years later. And um, and, I, I went, and this, the woman, she, I said, yeah, she said, oh, no, we don't, we don't do that now. I said, oh, no, she was, no we, we don't hire it, she said. But she said, I said, oh, because I, I hired it um, a long time ago and we did uh, a part. So you were the guys that changed changed their whole concepts of the, the basketball, you know, making no money. Yeah. No one used it. We turned it into an entertainment effect, so to speak, and um, it never looked back. Uh, and I, yeah, and it's like <coughs> there's a lot of people say that, you know, it's like if it wasn't for you, whatever. But it's just having the gump in yourself to be yourself and do what you want to do, right? And you'd be surprised. Oh, if, if someone will soon knock you down if it ain't right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In their, in their eyes. In their eyes. So yeah, the first one was at the powerhouse, is that right? Yeah, yeah, we did a cut of three there, I think. Three, and three. how many people attended the first one you did? That's pretty good, isn't it? Well, that yeah, was, yeah, we, we did it with some people that, 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 was, that were all... Um, I don't want to start mentioning the names. Yeah. But they were, they were in the scene, the club scene. Okay, okay. So they had a, a, a mail out thing, yeah. you know, telling people what it was. And it was all new for them. Um, so, so what sort of people and age group were coming uh, to the first one that you did? Was what there, here? Yeah, the first Melbourne. one we did here. Oh, it was uh, uh, clubby over, sort of yeah, uh, over 18s 18. and um, yeah, yeah, definitely over 18. Um, yeah, clubby people, you know, because uh, the, the the music we were playing it wasn't wasn't full on. Um, Acid house because the, the, like. the big places around that time was uh, King Street. You had inflation. You had um, yeah, chasers. You get in. We had a family you membership. Like yeah. 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 If your name wasn't on the door, you couldn't yeah. get, get in. That's right. If you if you looked wrong at shoes, yeah, yeah. If you wasn't the dress code, yeah, yeah. yeah. Boom, 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 boom. These still weren't being played in in nightclubs at this point of time. Things were different. Yeah, I think the closest I uh, my two favourite clubs at that point of time were. Commerce and Razor. and Razor, and and I loved them because they were more diverse. They had diverse people. When when you're in with diverse people, that they means were. people that think for themselves and and are creative in my mind, <clears throat> and and happy to share that themselves with you. They, there was that sort of crowd, and yeah. I loved it. And I'd found home. And there was a nice feeling there. It, it, it was wasn't nice. like going to. Um, the, the, the metro or like yeah. inflation, Actually, and you, you, it was like a meat market. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, uh, and that was it really. Uh, it, and yeah, it wasn't is, our thing, was it? No, no, it wasn't. It just wasn't. It was a thing. different world. Um, the also foundation, the gays, but they they were doing productions. They were putting on um, uh, not Red Raw, but oh, um, the day or some some particular. Um, okay. thing, you know, raising money for the AIDS Foundation or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it was the also the foundation, and um, we met the girl, and they were doing a party in a place called Pack and Stack. Um, and it, as it happens, um, this global village was just three doors, or no, part of it, next door. I said I can't remember the days. It was yeah. early days because. Um, Everything in Melbourne at the time was for lease. Yeah. Like inflation rate was seventeen percent. You know, it was, it, a lot, it was yeah. ridiculous. And um, uh, yeah, it, it was. Um, we went to Footscray as well because we were in the city no, living it, in. A- no, yeah, that's right. We, was, we lived in the city. <laughs> no, I just remember what was I saying. <laughs> um, we was living in the city, right? And we right. We've got to get a venue. I always wanted my venue. That's the only thing I, I can feel a little bit 
depressed about in a sense because it was in us to do this and we wanted it and we wanted it so bad was our own venue. Once we had our own venue, that was it. We were there. And, and that was, yeah, and you, you can't do a party at the Chicago. And, um, uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> to know. See, now I was talking about Birch Street, living there, Street, and yes. that's why we went to yeah, Birch Street. No, so while we're there, I'm looking for the venue. Everything's for lease in, in, in the city. So uh, there's this place um, down in Spencer Street or something. Really, really nice. So I don't know when the date was, but he had known about it. So obviously we've been doing them, and, and it's got out you know, to, to the media. And he says, "You're not doing one of these rave things, are you?" So I said, "No, no, 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 no." He said, "Well, look, he said, look, to be honest, he said, look, you can't. You could, you could do it if you wanted to. He said, but it would. It, you'd have problems down the line." He said, "I said, he said." If you really want my advice, and this was the main building inspector, and he changed the whole, he, he changed the whole thing because he said he said, look, he said, Richard, if you really want to do it, he says, get out of the city, away from people. He said, I suggest go west, go west, look for a place <laughs> in the west. He said, and you won't, your upset, uncle. You won't upset people. He said, and, and another thing is, he says. Before you ask for permission or whatever, or basically, I don't know if he said this, so he might have done, I think he said, don't ask for permission, right? Just do it. Just do it and do it for as long as you can until someone complains. It might be a year, might be. But when they complain and when the council comes back on you and says, what about this one and we want to do this and... You've got something to argue with and say, well, look, I've been running it for 18 months. There's been no one, no parking problems, there's been no sound problems, all these things that you're hitting me with. Well, what if this, what if that? Well, no, there isn't no what ifs because we have been doing it. <laughs> and there you go. So, so you never go and ask to do it, you just do it. You've got something then to argue, to fire back. Because if you go and ask for permission, they just go, no, no, no. no. Like we always used to go. say, draw, draw them a picture because they don't understand, right? And, and that, that was a catchphrase amongst all us lot at um, Global. Just draw them a diagram and they'll know what you're talking about. No good talking to them. Anyway, they were doing a party on Saturday night or on a Friday night or something like this. And um, or Saturday night, it's a... Can we have the setup? Set it up on the, or vice versa. Leave your setup there because you've got a laser, you've got this, you've got that. It's all booked, and we'll go halves with you. And they went, oh, yeah. So that was it. So we had then this setup that <laughs> for half the price, <laughs> and it was, it was a lot better than what we would have bought out ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Nice you know? setup. Yeah, and that was it. And we liked it. So you, can always, we're, we're, you could always we're, change we're, it um, next door to pack and stack. And, and, and TV, yeah. Right on the Maribong River. All on, the, all on that river. Was on the Maribong Everything yeah. was down oh. the way. That's what I say. That man that told us yeah, he gave you a to go. Hmm. That's where he liked us. What was his name? I oh, know. No, I know. <laughs> Don't mention names. <laughs> but, <laughs> was he a young guy but, or was he an old older guy? Older guy. Okay. But it, it was. Um, and it was. It was. That's a, a good tip. That's a really helpful. tip. There were a lot of people that were assisting us along the way. A lot, a lot of people Everyone assisted. has assisted us all the way. From the beginning, there was lots of assistance. I can't give them. enough love back yeah. to all them. No, yeah. it's great. And be thankful. It was a, oh, I'm very it's grateful. great when someone comes up out of the blue and goes, I'm, I want to help you for whatever reason. You know? 
And, and you know what? Oh, can I, re- oh, can I decorate a room? Yeah. Can I do, well, can how I would do you this? Like, can how I would do you that? Like to, how, how would you like yeah. to decorate it? Yeah. And, you know, be my guest. Yeah. Well, I, I you know, think, please just uh, give me uh, a. We've got this room here. It's, 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 a, it's a. You're playing jungle. Yeah. The room. It's yours to decorate. Yeah. This room here is the. Is the it's the techno. We used to have chill out rooms where if you want to. Quiet, Don't you, nice messenger, chair. they were amazing. And it was great, big visuals, all sorts of things, armchairs. And in the end, they were getting bigger, and, and some people didn't even go for the loud music, would go simply for, for the, the chill. chill out. And that was a really lovely evening because you'd have a group of people, you'd just go up and just really spread out. Richard and Heidi, thank you for joining me on the Voodoo Room. I appreciate it greatly. It's been fantastic having you both. Voodoo strikes. It'll tear apart your head when voodoo strikes. You wish that you was dead when voodoo strikes. It'll tear apart your head when voodoo strikes.